Do you identify with the gender of I would love for people to talk about masculine and feminine. So let's talk more about than that. the gender. Okay, let's talk about that then. Um, so how do you define the masculine and the feminine? So the masculine energy uh, we know very well. <laughs> We're living inside of a patriarchal society where everything is controlled, mm -hmm. organized. There is this kind of uh, scrutinized eyes of the masculine who wants to build and construct, right? It's the construct. Uh, and the psyche is the same. Freud is a construct of talking about the psyche of human beings and the way we see them and the way that it lies in them. And the, on the other side, we ignore the role of the feminine. So the feminine energy is more fluid, mm -hmm. it's curved, is organic, um, doesn't build like from a louder perspective, is building from a, an integration perspective. So this is two different identities, and both of them are actually um, needed. That's why we have all of them inside of us. Like you a woman, but you have a masculine energy and you have a feminine, as well as me, as well as the man. But the problem with the masculine, with the body of a man today, he has no understanding of his feminine energy. Mm -hmm. So whatever is the gender today, we have an issue with deeper who's deeply concerning your energy inside of you and you I and have a role in your identity if you don't understand your feminine energy and you believe if you're a man and I'm talking to you about your feminine energy and you believe you're gay. You believe that I'm telling you you're gay. You didn't understand what feminine in your energy is. But if I'm asking you as a man, do you understand my masculine energy, you're gonna say yes. Of course you do. Because I have to be completely um, aware of my masculine energy to live in a patriarchal society. So mm -hmm. my masculine energy is very developed as well. So that's the, that's the difference. And the feminine energy, mm -hmm. it's something for the last 10 years that in my work, I embody, I nurture, I expand, I study, and now I understand who I am. Great. I'm going to go back on your journey. Mm -hmm. um, if you can tell me uh, more about where you were born, uh, childhood, and then did you always felt these energies, or like if you can tell me more about that? Yeah, um, I'm born in Paris and in '77 from a, a Senegalese dad and a, a French mother, and I grew up in a very multicultural environment, uh, and I was a very active kid, very early. So my mother. Um, put me in martial arts at six years old with my brother. She, she did good because it's like, my daughter won't be a weak because this is the problem with me and I don't want her to be like this. So she recognized a weakness and she gave me the best opportunity for me to not feel weak into my life. Can I just, um, yeah. when you say weak, why, what do you think that was, this weakness? The vulnerability of, uh, of a woman living in a patriarchal society. A condition. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I, I take the example of my mother. She's from a family of nine brothers and sisters. She has uh, three sisters and the rest is six brothers. She's been expecting, expected to have a husband. She's expected, everybody expected her to have a husband and to have a kid. If she doesn't have a husband and a kid, she will be seen as a failure as a woman. But that was a very big uh, pressure in the 70s for women still. My mom couldn't leave her dream because she had, she had to fulfill a role. Mm -hmm. So she, she, she took me and she, she, when she raised me, she did the opposite with me. She teach me art from the beginning. She put me into martial art classes and she say, my daughter is not gonna be a vulnerable, my daughter is gonna be a And she did an amazing job. She's my, uh, she's my first master. Did you have conversation about it with your mother? Yes, that's why I'm, um, that's why I'm talking about this today because my mom um, 
it's not me like imagining something. My mom told me that. Mm. She probably didn't do like on this purpose specifically, but well, I'm laughing today and I was like, mom, I'm an artist, you want it. And by the way, I know it's me too. So even if you push me to, to become a free woman, it's involving if I want to live in society, if I'm living in society, I have an artist. Mm -hmm. And she's laughing about it because this is an agreement between a daughter and a mother. Like I agree with my mother who put me on this path. Some kids will not be agree with their parents to put them on an athletic path, you know, uh, any kind of path, like music path. They will like give up at 30 because they wake up and they say, oh, that's not my dream. Mm -hmm. She felt she was weak or like in terms of uh, having to compromise, having children and so on. And at the same time, I feel like uh, she was rebellious as well by uh, choosing your father being uh, Senegalese because yes. it's, again, that was something yes. Yes. radical. <laughs> that was radical and she never had a full approval of the family and she still, she stayed grounded. And I think that's one of the most amazing achievements she made, but I realized this way later in the dream. And I cry about it because I was like, wow, my white mother, I'm saying like this, my white mother realized her privilege even if she was not a rich white woman. And she met a Senegalese man. She saw that everybody was racist and was discriminating him. Why? She probably was walking on the street and just only met him. And to feel this pain within this body, black body, she completely challenged herself to accomplish and to heal the black man. I'm like, I don't think I could do that. Even mm -hmm. today, if you ask me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she did it, and she's still with me today. She couldn't be an artist and she become an accounting because that was the one who was like having the family together. And my dad has a lot of like, different issue with you know he worked at UNESCO he was a consul as well he was into politics but he had this difficulty to to swim into white society I can't deny it you know and he tried to hide this from us when we were growing up but definitely 10 years of like a desert with your job you know mm -hmm. when mother was supporting all of us mm -hmm. and I can recognize the truly commitment of my mother mm -hmm. into her life Funny because when you're saying that, I um, I already imagine both of your parents having this feminine and masculine energy. Your mom. Oh yeah. You know, it's my dad was way too masculine, like super authoritarian, macho. I mean, everything that I don't like about a man, you know, like at the extent of like being that controlling. I have it from my dad. Like, mm. So I can see. From far away, when a man is like this, there's no doubt. So, like he teach me everything from scratch, and my mom is the opposite, completely feminine, soft, never scream, never angry, uh, in empath, but you know, too much of empath. Mm. So that was Paris. Um, yeah. So you were born there. Where, where were you born? Did you in the 14th? No, I grew up in the 14th. Okay. Saint Vincent de Paul. And what kind of school like did you go to and um, what kind of relationship did you develop at that time? Like what was your day to day as a teenager? <laughs> um, school was boring to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know, in France, it's not like in your, in America, you, you, you have to sit for seven hours. I was way too much for a kid of like 12 or 11 years old. So I was a good student until 10. And then when I entered uh, college, um, I become very bored in school, like in class. After like two or three hours, I was bored. So I was focusing really on, on sports. So I was really good in volleyball. We used to have a crazy killing team of uh, volleyball women. And that was the first time that I experienced women together. Mm. And that adrenaline, that winning team, this, um, this boost of energy that all those women had a different quality because we have different, you know, quality for playing together. That's why uh, the 
you know, the trainer choose us. I was a lefty. I was, you know, I was very fast. Uh, other women was completely different, like more defensive. And we won a lot of, you know, game. And it really molds my psyche as a big fan of the collective mm. feminine energy. Because I, when I did it, I still feel for me it was one of my best time uh, as a as a teenager. Because each time I would go train, hours of training, sweating, being together, laughing, going back to train, challenging yourself, uh, having a, a trainer who just tell us that we can do better, we, we're not in full potential. Um, that's what every kid will dream about. I, I felt like when you when you are good with your body and the bodies give you back that exchange, I felt like that was my years of growing up uh, in Paris. I was not good in school, so my dad asked me to, to stop. And there was a lot of conflict. So at 14, I entered a huge conflict with my dad and no conversation at all for like two years. And the house, you know, energy was really bad. It was a long, like, fight, like a war in the house. And I met um, my first boyfriend at 16, who was a Colombian a rapper. And it was my my escape to enter a world of music and to enter a world of uh, hip hop generation and wants to change and was very rebellion and I was a rebel. This growth uh, from you know high school to my um, womanhood, um, I was with a man for like 14 years. Mm -hmm. So that's a very long time for a group. So, so I was not an artist, I did a high school and then I graduated from School of Visual Arts. Um, a great years in, in this creative space though. I learned a lot about music, every kind of music. Uh, South American music, jazz. He was very, this man was very good in musical history. And I learned a lot also from his parents because his two parents were two painters. So I grew up from 16, 17 years old like, to 22, 23, to a very artistic environment. And I was going towards being a graphic designer. Mm. And um, you said for all these years you were surrounded by men um, and this energy. So what, what did you get from that? How was it uh, and for your own development? I'm, I mean, I was conditioned, first of all, you know, like I was conditioned. I was, I was you trying to find your own identity as a French legalist and um, not people see that I guess like in, in, uh, in France you know people don't call you black they call you mixed so you both so you're okay but at the same time you're an exotic like meat you're exotic like object so everybody's trying to just imagine you as an exotic object so I was in comfortable protective zone with my ex because his family was very gentle and nice to me and very well educated but the word of hip hop put me in a lot of limitation and anger at the end because they lost their purpose and they're actually not expecting that word. I, I remember like hearing an interview when you said something beautiful about the way you, um, as a photograph, um, your relationship to people, your photograph is it's a gift. Um, mm -hmm that people are giving you the gift of their soul mm -hmm. and you are giving back. And can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so the, like when I start to, to, to choose to be a photographer, I have to put, I have to put a lot of question on the table. And the reason I, it, it just light me up is because why I want to be a photographer. What's the point? Like, there's so many photographers. They're all really good. Technologies become good, very good. Uh, fashion photographers, documentary photographer. I was not thinking about being in competition. Like, you know, when you're a martial artist, it's the same. I practiced kung fu for years, and when you're a martial artist, you realize that I didn't train to be in competition. I trained to learn the forms, and then when I learned the form. I have to develop my own way to do the forms. 